This video is designed to show you how to put rotors and brake pads on any early 70s Vega or Monza H-body using factory hardware. First step to removing the caliper from the H-body is to remove the retaining clips on the back of each pin. You must pry them with a screwdriver. Sometimes you break them using two flathead screwdrivers. You get behind glass and you press it outward. Pop it off. This will destroy it. It will separate it. You won't reuse that. You must always get new hardware. This is the little retaining clip here. And if you can't get to it, you can tap the back with the hammer bring it forward, then take an extension and put it here on the head and tap it back again. And that should bring it out to where you can get to it. And you just take your flat head and remove the clip, like so. There you go. Now you want to strike that tip and drive out the pins. Pin. See the head is coming out. We need to remove this pin. So you could pry it or pull on it. It's just a big nail. That's all it is. A big nail with a groove. Like so. Okay, do the same here, move that pin, it's like a big nail. Okay, now the caliper is free, you can pull it straight back, wiggle it out, and set it on your bucket. Now we want to get this dust cap off. Rotate it again. Rotate it. Just keep doing that. And there's your dust cap. You want to bend the cotter pin back together so that it's nice and straight. Okay, bend it back into straight position. And, I, and it's usually a good idea to get a fresh cotter pin because after that metal's fatigued a few times, you don't really want to rely on it. There we go. Got the cotter pin. Now this castle nut should be finger tight anyway, which it is. So you can just remove that. Okay. And at this point, the rotor is actually free. You apply outside force, pull it that way, it should come off, like so. So you can collect your bearing. Now this is where, this is the, this is the outer washer. Preserve that with the castle nut. And then you've got your bearing here. This is your inner bearing, or your outer bearing. Here's your outer bearing. It looks good, but we have all fresh because you're not going to mess with old bearings on a new rotor. Okay, so now we just pull this off. Zoop, like that. So I've decided I'm going to take this opportunity to clean this dust shield. I'm going to remove the nuts that hold it and, uh, you know, clean it really good and probably paint it silver. And then I'll put it back. Now if you decide to remove this dust shield and clean it, as I'm doing, protect the spindle with a rag so it doesn't get scratched and doesn't get gritty or dirty. Here's the brake rotor shield after cleaning it just with uh, bleach white and uh, purple power and a 
steel wool pad. So here's the brake uh, dust shield after cleaning it with wire wheels and sanding and a little bit of everything. That's clean enough to paint. Just get it nice and dry. Wipe it down with solvent. Get yourself some nice solvent. Wipe it down. And then shoot it with a little uh, high temp paint. This is silver. VHT flame proof. Dust shield is painted. Um, I'm looking at the inside of this spindle and it just looks kind of dirty. Might be a good chance to clean it. We can actually see it. Let's get in there and clean it up with a brush. This is a good investment. They're pretty inexpensive. It's a brake brush. It's good for getting off rust and grease and crap without getting your hands down in it. It gets all the junk off. And you can spray it off with solvent when you're done. Keep the bristles clean. But it just gets everything nice and clean. Now I've just painted the outer edges of this spindle arm with the VHT caliper paint. That holds up pretty well to solvent and brake Okay, time. so here's the original 50 year old rotor that came on the car new from Chevrolet. And here's the Raybestos 508R replacement rotor. And I've gone ahead and cleaned the edges with solvent and I've painted them. I just used a silver enamel, this part too, because as you can see, it's exposed steel and over time it becomes rusty. So by painting it, it doesn't become rusty. It kind of preserves it, keeps it nice looking. But we want to visually inspect them side by side to make sure that we're dealing with the same animal. It looks like they are good, yeah. Same dimensions. Got the four log spacing. Wonderful. So now what we'll do, we're going to clean out this raise with a little solvent. And then we're going to put in brand new bangs. This comes with its own race. But there's already one installed, so you don't need that part. We're only interested in this, the bearing. And that will sit there, like so. But first, we have to pack the bearing. And that's kind of a tricky thing. You gotta get some good wheel bearing grease and put it in the palm of your hand and kind of scoop it up in between the rollers and down inside it till it's just loaded with grease. It's just completely loaded with grease. And then grease in here. And then you put it down in there. Then you have a new seal. See the old seal on the original? I mean, I redid these brakes a few years ago. That's why the grease is clean. But those are the original bearings, just greased and a new seal. So then when we're done, we get this in. We gotta drive the seal down. See, let's drive it down. And that keeps the grease in and the dirt out. A word or two on grease for your wheel bearings. This is just your standard wheel bearing grease and it works fine. You know, that's what they used back in the day. However, we've come a long way with lubrication. So you could go with the full synthetic. That's what I think I'm going to try this time. This full synthetic Molly Fortified Gray Grease from Valvoline. You want to read the label and make sure that you're good to go because it says right here recommended for use in all wheel bearings. So you want to wash your hands really good. No dust, nothing on your palms. And get some grease. Big old dollop of grease. Put it in your palm of your hand. It's going to be messy. Take your bearing, and you just dig into the grease. Just push it into the rollers. Just keep going around the whole thing. Dig it in, dig it in. Put it on your palm, dig it in. Dig it in. Pack those bearings. And then you can take it out, all the excess. 
Do it again, do it again on the top. Dig it in, dig it in. Fill those bearings. That luscious grease. There you go. That's probably pretty packed. Line the race with it. Line the bearing with it. Set it in there. Just like that. And that should work. Yeah. Plenty of grease. Now your hands are a mess. Now you go get your wife and you try and touch her face and smear it on her. No, get a rag. Okay, so that one's ready for its seal. We just have to drive that seal down. Well, I just set it on the ground on the concrete and I went around the ring tapping it down in until it's flush with the outer mating surface. And that's how the seal is when it's installed. So this way. Yeah, that's how it was. Yeah. And then I actually painted the nuts too. This is kind of a neat thing. When you are painting bolts, you just poke a hole in a cardboard box. And then the nut is secure in the cardboard box, allow you to spray paint it. We're ready to go here. Bolt again. It won't be all rusty. Just a little bit of anti-seize. crazy to think that the last person who dealt with these parts probably in Lordstown back in the 70s building it. I don't think these have been disturbed. I have a funny uh, Vega brake shield story. Oh, back in the 80s made the mistake of going to Midas for one of those free brake inspections. Well, later on I saw how they did it. They just took a crowbar and bent the, the shield back to peek at the brake pads. It was insane. This was all mangled. So that's what you get for your free brake inspection from uh, Midas. You can kind of see why they went out of business. These bolts don't have to be monkey tight, it's just a little dust shield. You don't want it coming loose, but I bet 15, 20 pounds more than enough. Okay, and so that seal that we just did will protect this inner ring from dirt and contaminants getting into our bearings. We're ready to put the uh, new um, Rotor on, except I've got to wipe it off with solvent first to grease the spindle a little bit. Get it all nice and gooey. Okay, on goes the new rotor. There we are. Okay. Now we've got to do the same thing. We've got to pack the outer bearing and put it in there with the washer and the castle nut. And each time that you pack a bearing, you should wash your hands. Make sure there's no grit, no dirt, no contaminants. Indeed. Probably works with a Mustang Type 2, I bet. It's a similar kind of thing. But there's my old bearing. Look at my old bearing. Here. Here's the original. There's the original. And here is the new one. And it comes with a race, but like I say, you don't need the race. The races are built into the hub. So there, look at that. It's much beefier. Well, get a big dollop of grease. Get our grease. 
a big old blob of grease. And we want to put it in the palm of our hand. We want to pack our bearings. We just go around and around and around, packing it into the rollers. Pack it into the rollers. And do it the other side too. Turn it over. Pack it in. Pack it in. Pack it in. Pack it in until all that good grease is up in the rollers. Alright. There's a little groove. There's a tiny groove right here. And you, there's a little raised portion on the washer. So you want to connect those two together. Put that here like that. Okay. And then your castle nut will go here. I think the manual says to just tighten it down to something like 25 feet and then back it off and then put your cotton in. Okay. And in. Okay, so that's seated, but that's too tight because now the rotor, well actually it's pretty nice. But it's still snug, so I would back it off a hair. Make sure it's seated like that, and then just pull it off. Just put your cotter pin in. Just like that, and then bend the cotter pin tangs out. And that's what keeps the spindle from coming off the car. Because otherwise, you know, backing up or whatever could unloosen the nut and the whole mess could fall off. So this cotter pin is crucial. On airplanes, everything crucial is wired. Parts around the engine all have this safety wire going through them to keep the bolts from vibrating loose. You see, so that's nice and tight. It's turning smoothly. Nice fresh grease in there. Brand new meaty rotor. And you can check it for play. You can it back and forth, that's fine. Little bit's good. Like I say, you'd rather have a loose bearing than a tight one. Because <laughs> a tight one could be ugly. Okay, now we just bend this little guy. Whoop, like that. And if you want, you can uh, put it in sideways and turn it that way. But this will actually work just fine because it's never going to go anywhere. Okay, and then we just put this dust cover on. Just go. Give it a little smack, boop, boop. But then the outer rim, you want to move it back and forth, all around. Get that dust cap on. Drive it down till it's nicely seated, evenly, just like that. That looks good. Okay, now anyone who's watched any of my other videos on these brakes, they know that it's tricky. These little Vega things are a pain in the butt. This little plastic clip thing, you got to line it up with the gap to lift out your pad. See, hey, these pads are beautiful. Shame to waste them. It's okay. We've got new fresh centric ones to put on. So you see the little keeper thing has only one slot that will allow it to come off. And I highly recommend, if possible, to replace this plastic thing too. But since these are new, probably only have, oh, hmm, 6,000 miles on them. I think they're fine to reuse. So you got to get it past this little clip. Okay, so yeah, we need to take a C-clamp and squeeze this pad down and push that piston down as far as it'll go. It'll push the fluid back up in the master cylinder. It might even spill out the overflow. So just take your C-clamp and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And that's probably good. Just trying to push it back a little. Okay, we've got our pads in the clip. Clip is on the 
caliper pads are in the caliper. The caliper is resting in the upper mount. I just need to swing this part down or jiggle it till it's all settled. Then we can if the pins are contaminated, it's good to wire wheel them with a copper wire wheel on your Dremel. Like this. Just till it's all bright and shiny. And they can slide in and out. Okay, now you want to make sure you got your caliper on right because these pins should slide in if they are right. Both top and bottom should slide in to the groove in the caliper bracket on the spindle. Like this one's good. I'm working on this one still. There you go. Okay. Now we are golden. We can drive these big ass nails down in. Just like so. And then for the last little bit, use a big uh, socket extension and just use that to drive it past the caliper thing and seat it. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. Isn't that great? Big old nails. Thank you, GM. Little tiny C clips. But those have to go on the back sides of the pins. Back there, in the groove. So, I have driven the little locking clip onto the ends of the pins. You see? They are in position. So our brake job is complete. That's how you do a brake job on an H body. So that's easy, right? Drive the pins out, pull the caliber off, take the castle nut off, yank off your spin yank off your rotor, clean it all up, put new grease in, or put a new rotor on, whatever. That's what we're doing here, placing the rotor. This should be great. There should be no pulsing in it. Okay guys, I went and road tested the car. The brakes are awesome! I, uh, I bedded the brakes. And so whenever you do brakes, you gotta do that. What you do is you get the car up to like 30. And then you stop the car gently. Then you get the car up to 40. And then you stop the car gently. Then you get the car up to 50, and then you stop the car gently. You get it up to 60 and to 70, and you keep doing that. And what that does is it, it's introducing the brake pad to the new rotor so that they get accustomed to one another and they kind of create a copacetic union where everything's level and smooth. So I did that, and uh, now they're great. Now I've got the brakes of a brand new Vega in 1972. Only the brake pads are better now because we've had a lot of advan advancements in pad technology so you know you have finer friction material you don't have that coarse metal crap chewing up your rotor you've got the better stuff not as much brake dust probably and quieter so they work yes they work new rotors new pads